Okay, I'm back. Um, this is part six of my road to Nirvana, Nirvana. and um, in this uh, episode, I'm going to be responding to the pull request feedback that I got for the last the pull request I made in, in episode five. So, if you didn't see what I was doing that one, you may want to go and have a look there. Basically, I assembled a pull request for QGIS for the um, first run. Uh, screen that you get if you or the upgrade screen if you're uh, running QGIS after running like a uh, version 2 for example um, it will prompt you to upgrade so uh, let's first start by having a look at the, the feedback that we got um, uh, so this was the pull request I posted this was the old um, uh, welcome screen and then this was my revision proposed revision for it uh, when you might when you're migrating and this is a revision when you're not migrating so there was various feedback basically the feedback fell into two camps one was the aesthetics um, uh, one suggestion was that the logo is too big um, and then the other one was from Niall saying that he thinks maybe the whole feature should be scrapped. And then I, I tracked down the ticket that I was actually um, uh, doing this fix in response to. Um, and the consensus there was that maybe we should keep the dialogue for this use case where you're doing a migration, but um, not use it for this case where you're just um, running an older, uh, running on a on top of an existing version of QGIS 3. So, um, yeah, so basically the consensus was that we're going to show the dialog if you're upgrading from QGIS 2, but not if you're not. So in this episode, I'm going to dig in a little bit into the pull request. Now, I'm going to have to write a few lines of C++. It's still not going to be anything too complicated, I don't think. And um, um, we're going to improve the padding a little bit so I want to make the um, I want to make the just this gutter between these two things a bit wider um, and we're going to try to fix the um, fix the logic so that it only runs in the upgrade situation uh, okay so we're going to first look for the first run dialog so First run dialog is over here. Okay, and we're also going to look for the first run dialog UI file here. Now, last time I was editing editing it in Qt Designer rather than inside of Qt Creator. That's probably just old habits because when I started in QGIS, I didn't have Qt Creator available to me. So I tended to write code in Vim or something else, and then use Qt Designer for the designing. I'm going to give it a go inside of inside of Qt Creator um, and see how that works. So um, there are some visual things. There's another visual thing in here that I also don't like, and that is that there is a slight bit of padding on the left-hand side here. So um, that may not be so easy to see, um, but I kind of notice those things and they irritate me. But so I want to go in here and just adjust the layout of this thing to give it zero padding on the left over here and see if that fixes it um, there you go so you can see it pulled the text over to the left now which is for me much nicer and then i want to go on the top level layout which is a good layout and i want to increase the spacing in the um in the horizontal direction so you can see, I'm just going to put a very large number in here and see what happens. You can see that doing that basically just pulls the pulls the two things apart here. Actually, I quite like it with that 50. That looks good for me. So, um, and that's all the change we're going to make because that's really just a, a small tweak. So I'm going to save that. And then the other thing that I need to to go and look at is that um, is that C++ file. So I'm actually just going to close it once so it's not cluttering things up for me. Um, and then we're in here. Now, I'm sure there's a shortcut to hide this thing on the left. Let me see if I can figure it out quickly. Um, no. 
Yeah. Okay. There we go. Um, so I'm in the header now. So I want to get to the the um, C plus plus. So you can right click and switch to file in the source. I'm going to gradually start learning as many keyboard shortcuts as I can, um, so that I can become more efficient and cute creator. Because I think that's um, a big factor in being like productive when you when you're writing code. Just learning the IDE well. Um, and since I don't know it, I'm just going to make a careful note of them. Uh, I kind of think that also control click is also going to take me through, yeah, which it does. So that's just nice uh, instinctive, uh, uh, or you know, it follows what your insp instinct tells you it should do. Um, well, actually, did it. Um, <laughs> I'm busy saying it. it should take me through to the implementation, but it actually didn't. So we see that F4 can also be used. So let's try that um, just. F4 now, my keyword, I've already have to press function F4. Um, okay, I'm actually looking at the wrong thing. I want to switch between the declaration and the function. So that's shift F2. So. Let's see if it works. Um, Oh, so check the source. Now something's happened. I don't know if it's been. Um, ah, I know what's the matter. I'm I'm looking in the source. <laughs> Just being dumb because I'm not thinking straight. But uh, I'm looking in the source. But actually, the source is not what I want to be changing. I want to change. The thing that invokes this file in the first place. So I'm going to look for references to this. Um, so find references is Control Shift U. So let's try learn a keyboard shortcut here, and then I can see. Okay, it's referenced from main. Um, and all right. So now there's some logic here about whether to show that dialog or not. Now if I just go up a little bit. Um, You'll see that it starts over here. It says the settings migration is only supported on the default profile for now. Uh, and if the profile name is, uh, so it checks if the profile name is Latin, uh, Latin string default. So uh, if it's yes, then uh, it creates a new settings instance called mix settings, which I guess is a short form for migration settings. Um, I don't know what KA version number is, but anyway, that's okay for now. Um, then we've got a little bit of logic here to see if um, uh, what the first run version is. So it's using the settings, looking for a key for the value of the key called migration first run version flag. Okay, to see, I guess that's going to see what was the last version migrated. And we could probably quickly dive into our into our config file and have a look at that. So remember in the previous episode I was going to um, dot local share QGIS. Okay, and then if we go down into the um, let's go into I think I'm currently in this one over here. So I see the QGIS. I look in this any file here. So I'm going to look to see if I can find uh, first run in this file. First run version. Well, let's look for migration. Okay, so there's nothing in this file, but I should probably be looking in the default because it did say only the default profile is supported. Try that. Okay, so there we can see the migration has the file version is 2.0, but the first run version is 3.15. So you can break this out into say 3.15.0, something like that. So uh, it knows that the migration's already been run on here, and probably just deleting these couple of lines would be a good way to uh, trigger that dialog to show rather than the whole profile deletion which I was doing last time.
So that's just uh, for background to see what's going on there. So that gets back that version, which is going to be in my case 31500. And then it's got a Boolean flag here to say um, it's doing an OR logic. So it says if the first run version equals naught, in other words, it didn't manage to get something out because over here it defaults to zero or naught uh, if it doesn't find this flag. So it will default to zero or the version int is less than the first run version. So it's checking to see, uh, sorry, greater than. So it checks to see, is the current version of QGIS greater than the last recorded version in here? And if it is, it will prompt you to do a migration. So uh, or it will add this to, it will set this flag to true. All right, and then the next line over here says, uh, uh, it's going to make a unique pointer. Um, so that means I think there should only ever be one instance of this version migration. Um, I actually don't fully understand what a unique pointer would do, so I'm going to quickly just uh, Google it um, here. And just see um, if they tell us in simple terms what it does. So I think it's a smart pointer, a smart pointer that owns and manages another object through a pointer and disposes it when it goes out of scope. Okay, so it's going to do some some nice magic for us to make sure that this there's no um, that this thing is destroyed when it's not used anymore, or when this uh, variable go when this migration variable goes out of scope. So this version migration is another class which has got some logic to figure out if we can migrate. Okay, and it takes in two parameters, one which is version two and the other one which is the current version. Um, so that is a thing that's gonna have some methods in there that we can use. <coughs> now we can see that it's saying it's a migration and um, we have force migration and settings, um, which came from, um, let's see where that came from. Find the declaration of that. Um, what is the shortcut for finding the declaration? Okay, but we can kind of intuit that this thing has got something to do with forcing the migration. Um, so these are the conditions under which um, it's going to run the migration. And then if it, it's got um, a further criteria here to say, if these two things are true, then show the... Um, oh, actually, sorry, here. If this uh, 2.0 file exists, then um, let me see if oh, if it does not exist, then hide the migration part in the dialog. So this is one thing that I want to clean up. I'm going to go clean it up in the dialog as well. I want to remove this method. So I'm going to um, uh, go to this one. Sorry, I'm going to go to this first run dialog implementation, which is the one that we were looking at just now. And you see this this hide migration. So I want to get rid of that because that's one of the things we're trying to not use anymore. And then I'm going to go to the switch to the header and I'm going to hide. I'm going to remove this method as well because we don't want to sh we don't want to remove those uh, widgets from the from the dialog anymore. Okay, so that's one change. I'm we'll save that. I say that and this is just keeping things tidy because I'm not going to be calling that method. I don't want to leave that method lying around in my um, implementation either. Let's go back here. So now this thing should give an error if if the parser can catch up. It should be saying, um, let's try and see. Um, Let's 
see that method is now missing from it. Okay, and the parse has managed to finish updating its um, logic. Uh, okay, anyway, so we're going to remove that um, because we're not going to do this kind of logic. And we actually want to keep this bit of logic because we only want to show the the um, migration tool if this file exists already. So I'm going to kind of move this logic to the outside of this um, of this stuff here, uh, and then it can run all its checks inside of that. Okay. Um, so let's let's actually just do that now. So I'm grab that, take that over here, and. Uh, I think we can put it um, even over here. Um, I'm only going to run this. We're going to turn this into the true condition, so it only runs if that file exists. Um, I need to get rid of this closing bracket. Um, yeah, so I want to put it there and then I'm just going to indent everything here one level. Okay, so now basically I'm not going to run any migration logic unless this QGIS2 file name already exists. Now I could probably be even a little bit more tidy because there's a bunch of logic running here which doesn't even need to be run if we don't have that file um, let's move this inside of here um, is this used somewhere else why is it complaining about control shift u was to find usages what was it uh, find usage Find references, control, shift, U. Um, okay, so I think this is not even used anyway. I am no. Okay, we've got this logic that has to come after well, so let's move that down to the something like that, um, and we can update the comments. Um, update it to only show if have a migration from QGIS to and then I can put the link to this pull request here uh, just so that somebody can understand why I changed the logic um, alright I think there might be more messy looking stuff in here but uh, that I can tidy up but I'm just I think it's probably fine like that um, uh, Have a quick scan over it. Yeah, I think I'll keep it like that for now. I'm going to save that, build it, make sure I didn't make any uh, silly mistakes in my C. Um, I'm going to, while it's building, I'm going to remove that section here because I want to try and trigger that migration to be to happen. Um, and I should probably set my QGIS profile to default as well. Okay, this is um, this is the one that I uh, this is the packaged one. 
I'm going to go in here and just set my profile to default. Okay, and this is still the 3.14 package one, so I don't see anything there. Um, I'm going to just remove that again because I think just even just doing that would have probably added that section back in. Yep. So I'm just going to go move that again. And then now we can run it here and see if that dialog pops up. I expect it to not pop up because I don't have a queue just two settings directory uh, available. So that is expected behavior. Now if I want to make a queue just two settings uh, directory to test it properly, I've got to go and first of all clean that away again if it was added, which it wouldn't have been because I put that all inside of a big test block. Then I'm going to just Google to see um, where did we store just two settings before. Um, here just two um, settings likes just to remember where uh, it was put. So um, Okay, so it says party config. Okay, this is the wrong section. I'm in the I'm in the server manual, I think. Um, okay, so it used to be under dot tilde dot q just two. Let's go and make that directory. It might be enough just to make that. Um, and try to run it again. I could be uh, finding more ways to save time during the startup, which I'm going to do. Um, okay, so that was not enough to do it. Let's have a look where we thought. Um, it, would, it should be so. Um, So this, this might be tripping this up because it might be looking for um, a path in here. Um, this is now when the debugger would be kind of handy because then I can put a breakpoint here and see what um, Q settings gives us back. It might also be handy just to see um, what this value is. So I'm going to just separate them out like this. Um, like that we're just gonna stop it running and build it quickly so I'm just I just want to see what the path comes back here as that it's looking for to see if my test is valid okay so dodgy, dodgy code warning there <laughs> Um, let's have a look. That is fine. That's got one, two, one, two brackets. Um, ah, I shouldn't have put that semicolon on there.
Okay, so it looks like it's built, and let's run it in the debugger. Okay, and then I can inspect this thing over here. So, um, again, I'm just learning as I go here, guys. So, um, let's have a look. Add expression evaluator. There is path there. Where's the actual value for it? Ah, okay, it's only getting to there now. Okay, so let's see what's in path home to linux.config. Okay, so now I can see what it's checking for, and then I can put, make sure that that path exists to um, to test it. Okay, so let's see if it will let me copy that. Um, mm -hmm. All right, uh, this is just old age talking. I should have known that um, the profile was not here. Anyway, you can't remember everything every day. Um, so let's do make do a minus p. We make this path. Oopsie. Uh, will it let me just copy this bit here? There we go. Um, and I'm going to do cd.config QGIS and then I'm going to do touch um, QGIS2.conf Alright, so now if I go back to my code here um, it's about to check if that exists and then it should be true and go inside the loop. So let's try to do some stepping through here. Um, Alright, so it's gone inside, so now it did find that, and then I'm just going to let it run because I think everything after that should be as expected. There we go. So now it's popping up the dialog because it found the QGIS2 folder, and then the rest should be just the normal logic. So I think those are the changes I want to make. I've been able to use the debugger now that I was setting up in the last um, episodes. Um, I've been able to tweak the dialog a bit and the, and the logic based on feedback. And um, I'm going to then push this again and see if uh, there are any other comments. If they're not, maybe we can merge it. If they are, then I'll go and address those and so we'll go on. So let's go and commit our changes here. Okay, so you can see I've changed those four files. The UI file, which is just, I changed the, the um, frame spacing and so on. The first run dialog where I removed that um, method that we no longer need. And the main CPP file where I just um, changed the logic about when that dialog gets shown. So I'll make a commit message here. I'm not going to type a whole um, path to the to the issue or to the PR. I'm just going to put this number here. Paste that. Um, okay. So now, um, if you watched the earlier videos in my road to Nirvana, you saw that I had some uh, did some setups with Matthias Kun's help to get some auto formatting. So there's a Good example of where I forgot to put a double uh, to put a space between those two braces, um, but now it's going to do it for me, which is great. Um, I'll just commit it again, and then I push that to my branch. Um, all right. 
right, and then that should that should trigger the um, build. Um, Um, am I going to be really naughty if I push that to my uh, with a force push? I'm just going to before I do any force pushing, I'm going to just check what my origin is. So origin for me is my own. Fork, so that's fine. I won't make anybody upset if I force push to that. Hopefully, I won't make them upset. Okay, then let's go look at the pull request and see if it triggered another build. Um, uh, let's have a look. Now I can see four chain, four files have changed, and there's my updated logic there. All right, so that's uh, this one's a short one. Uh, that's my my um, nightly little bit of fun kids hacking. Um, I'll check in again next time and see um, where the pull request has got to. I would say just before I go that. Um, you kind of have to leave your ego at the door when you're working on open source and QGIS and um, so and so. Um, if somebody asks you to change something, just uh, try to discuss it nicely and don't expect that always everything will be accepted the first time. Maybe people may want to tweak things or correct things or even not have your pull request at all, and that's also also should be fine because um, you know you're just you're trying to make an improvement but um, for what for you as an improvement may not be for other people or um, yeah so you know put it out there and if you get if you're planning to do a really big pull request which this is not um, you should definitely try and discuss it with people or make a QEP um, I'll show you the QEPs in another session or uh, you know, get some feedback before you invest a lot of time in it because at the end of the day your pull request may be rejected and then you're going to have um, a hard time uh, uh, yeah, with yourself thinking about all the work you've done and it wasn't um, accepted. Alright, so that's it. I'll, I will um, update you the next time I'm recording my screen. Thanks for watching.